Hi everybody, today we're going to go over some very basic tags that are used in Foundation for Emails. Um, these are the Inky tags. Um, it's the XML schema. Looks like HTML, but it's actually a very simplified version of HTML. And it's what's parsed out uh, to generate all the table structures used for your emails. So let's take a look at some of the really basic tags. There aren't too many of them. Uh, we'll go over some of the tags and then a few of the uh, variations and um, attributes for these tags. But uh, later on, we can go over some details about the uh, additional ones, like for menus and buttons and things. So the very first one is the container tag. And what I've got here, I've already started up a project using the foundation build command. Um, I've got my browser already open over here. And this is the same text, same code that I almost exactly the same as I had before. And what I want to show you is how these are constructed. So the first outer part of any email is going to be container. This tag is essentially one giant table under the hood. And this gives you the overall frame for your email and centers things nicely for you. And inside of that, you break up your content into rows and columns, just like you would a table. And you do that with a combination of the row tag and the columns. So it's not too dissimilar from a table, but it does provide um, a lot of, kind of hides a lot of the nesting of the tables for you. So you don't have to deal with so many, you know, TH, TR, TD tags. Um, so it seems to flow a lot better when you're creating an email. So this container inside here, you just put your row tag and for each row, then you break it up into various columns. Now, one of the things that you can do with the columns um, is, as you can see later on down here in my code, is there are only two breakpoints in uh, Foundation for Emails. That you can modify those, and I'll show you where in just a minute, but those two breakpoints essentially uh, break things up into a small and a large. So you'll, have, you'll have a large version, a wider version. Um, some people just call it their desktop version. And then you have a small version, which is more like a mobile or tablet version. And each of those uh, is broken up into uh, up to 12 segments across the screen. We're using a 12 element grid system. And if you're familiar with any kind of the design frameworks for CSS out there, many of them use this uh, 12 uh, element grid system. So, so what you do for each column is you say, okay, if, if I know I'm gonna have 12 elements all the way across the screen. Um, for small, I wanted to take to take up, this column's gonna take up all 12, but for large, it's only gonna take up two. That way you can stuff some additional columns in. So what I can do here is add another column in. Small, we'll make that 12. And we'll take a look at some of the variations of this in just a minute. Now these elements here really should add up. If you have multiple columns inside of one row, all of these for a large, the sum of everything in a particular row should add up to 12. Um, for the columns here, you'll see in a minute how this reacts when you have 12 for each column. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add in these two columns here. Now we need some content. I have some things saved here, so let me just throw an image in here. And I guess I'll go grab the other one I had. We'll put that one in. I will save it. It will regenerate for me. And it looks like you'll see here we have for large we're on the large setting right now. We have two spaces, two, co two columns used up, and then we have 10. So you can see how it's automatically adjusted the height of the images to adjust for that. But this demonstrates the essential, essentially the two column and 10 column for that. Now, if I want to change that out, I could make this eight and four. And it, again, it, it really kind of readjusts accordingly. 
Now, as I slide things to the small, you'll notice it goes to 12 and 12. Now, the images are different sizes. Essentially, I did that just to make sure I got different images from Unsplash IT. But what happens is when you go to the small, because 12 is taking up the whole width of the page, it automatically stacks the elements. So it essentially does what responsive design normally does uh, when you're shrinking down the size of the screen. So it works out pretty well. So if you want to you can make it evenly split, we'll make it six and six, reload, and now you've got two columns across here. And then we go ahead and shrink it down. Again, it stacks things properly. Now that looks really nice, uh, but a lot of people go, hey, wait a minute, I want to have this thing really be forced to go the full width of the page. One of the nice little attributes of the row is the collapse class name. And what that does is basically collapses down the gutters, you know, any borders on that particular row. So now we have both of these images, although they're different sizes, they're being forced to go side by side, same size. And if we squeeze it down, you'll see it doesn't, because it's not full width, we've told to take up 12 and they're different sizes. It doesn't, doesn't make a difference in this particular case. What I can do is I can play around. You can also play around with this a little bit here. And now when you do it, because it's effectively you're telling it to, for small and large, take up half and half of each one. Although the content, because we've defined different column widths for the small and the large, the text will collapse down from three columns horizontal to three columns vertical, or three cells rather. The images will stay 50% and just scale down. So there's some cool ways you can use the collapse tag, I'm sorry, collapse uh, class with a row to get some interesting effects and make sure it works properly for your design. So really, it's pretty simple. We have container for the whole email. We've got the row, which you can apply your uh, special classes that are defined by the framework or your own classes. You can go in into your um, app.scss uh, file. You can add in some of your own classes and add those right in here as well if you want to. So you can you can add a background color. You know, if you set a gray, for instance, you create a class called gray. You could define that as a background color. And then anytime you put gray on that row, the background for that row would automatically become gray. So pretty easy, pretty simple stuff. Um, very effective at simplifying how the whole uh, table structure works. The next thing we can talk about real quick um, is a spacer. Uh, one of the things that uh, often, you know, a lot of times in emails people have done with images is trying to stick in spacers. And because emails don't always receive images properly, things get really ugly, you'll get broken images, all kinds of nasty stuff. So if you wanted to have these images, for instance, drop down a little bit, one of the nice tags we have to kind of align some of that is called a spacer. And what we can do is define the size of that spacer, the height rather, more specifically, I guess, is say you want it to be 50 pixels. You put a closing spacer tag on there, save it, and now it automatically will generate a nice spacer for you here. So there's no need to create, you know, images, you know, uh, transparent images and stick them in to get spacing, all that kind of stuff. So you can adjust this however you need to, to give yourself a nice, you know, spacing. And if you want to, we'll, we'll do that example I just gave you. Uh, let's try a, we'll define a class of gray. Find a background color. Oh, let's do um, make it like a light gray color. And if we go back to our text, we could make this row.
and now the background color of the row matches the background color of the page. Pretty cool stuff. And then again, it's just, it's not there's no mutual mutual exclusivity for the uh, canned or you know the framework specific ones. So if I add a collapse in there, you'll notice the padding is now gone from the edges and it goes full width. So you can still use those with your own classes. So it works out pretty well. So we're going to go next time into some other options like the buttons, the menus, um, and a lot of the other attributes you can add to the tags. But I wanted to get a short video out there just to let you guys play around with this a little bit, especially for those getting started. If you have any questions, please comment below. And if you like the video and want to see more, hit the like button, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.